Lucille, and I was named after my mother, and I was born in Salt Lake City in 1929. When I was little, we went to Provo, because Dad was just getting into the pharmacy business, and we moved to Salt Lake, and then we moved to Ogden, and I remember more Ogden than I do with the other places. Uh, we moved around uh, a lot, and why, I don't know. We lived on, uh, I remember, I went to kindergarten at Polk School, and then we moved to Washington, out to Washington, oh, out, uh, 12th Street in Washington. I went to first grade, second grade, and third grade there, and then I moved up back up on 24th Street, I went to Polk for a couple of years, and then they changed the boundaries, and I had to go to Larn Far. Billy still got to go to Polk, and my friends were all in Polk school. So, and then I went to Central Junior High, and that's where I met Dad. And he used to pester the living daylights out of me, and I got so I couldn't stand him. <laughs> and then I went to Ogden High. I was kind of a social thing, I guess, because I, I was in a sorority in high school, and I became president of it, but I really enjoyed it. I had good friends. I was in the orchestra. I learned how to play the bass fiddle when I was in, in uh, Ogden High, and I enjoyed that, and I played uh, also in the orchestra when I went to college, So, and I was kind of self-taught the bass fiddle, which was, and I really loved it. <clears throat> uh, that was... I don't know, I just had I just had fun in high school. Weaver College was down on 25th Street. That was uh, and it was just a Weaver College then. And uh, Dad and I started going together really quite a bit when we were when I, uh, I was in college. So I, we skipped a bunch of classes, so <laughs> I didn't really learn a whole lot. But uh, for the, just the two semesters we went there, that's where Dad and I met. We really started going together again. Oh, Elaine, oh, that's something. Elaine played the violin. Her mother was the, was the violin teacher, and her sister Nancy played uh, the cello, and I played the piano. And we'd go to different lunch, women's luncheons, and we'd play together uh, a little trio thing there. That was, that was also fun. Elaine, we just did everything together. In fact, we'd come home from school, change our clothes, and go stand out in the middle of the street and talk like we hadn't talked, seen each other all day. So, yeah, that's about what we did. Well, Billy and I were <coughs> closer together uh, uh, because we're there. Charlene was. The mother had three, two families. We said there was, I'm the oldest, then Billy, and then Charlene. And when Char, there was about eight, eight years difference between Charlene and I, and my, she was the baby, so she went everywhere, and, and Billy and I just kind of wandered around by ourselves. We just it was just us. So I became really close with Billy. Um, Char, and then there was 15 years between Drew and I. So. Uh, I spent a lot of time taking care of, of Drew, but D, I didn't because that was when Dad and I got married and I didn't have much at all with the twins. I started working when I was 13 years old because my dad had a drugstore and I worked on the lunch counter and I worked there until Dad and I got married. So that was a long time. That was like the old time soda jerks where we used to make ice cream sundaes and sodas from scratch. <clears throat> and he had a lunch counter where we'd have the lunch, serve the lunches. One of the most embarrassing things I'll ever, never forget is we used to have to put the coke, fill the coke tanks up over, up over us and I can't remember, and put these big gallon things, pour the syrup in them. And the people from the bank used to come over and have their break and have a coke. Well, I was filling that thing and it slipped out of my hand. All these ladies and their nice things, I splashed that stuff all over. It went all over everything, everybody. And I was so embarrassed. I run to the back and I don't think I come back and every time break time would come, I could go in the back and find something to do. I, 
Life at home with mom and dad was not fun, was not good. My mom and dad were both alcoholics. And it was just a different living. I never went to church. I maybe went to mutual. Oh, I think I could count it on my one hand. And Sunday school, I never, there wasn't any, we didn't have prayers. In fact, I am embarrassed to say this. Elaine was a Protestant and she went to church with her parents. And she, one day we were talking, she says, the only thing I don't believe about your church is Joseph Smith. I didn't even know who Joseph Smith was. So that was kind of a shock, but I didn't, I didn't get interested in the church really until after Debbie died. I guess I really wasn't really that infatuated with dad until after he was gone, really. Uh, but we went out, we dated, went to ball games and to movies. It was about the, what we did. Uh, and then when he went, when he went overseas, I, I guess I just wasn't really that involved in the war to know really what was going on until he got over there. And then, it, but that, our courting days were just <clears throat> going to movies, being together, taking walks. We used to go walking a lot. Did. I was still going to high school and, and I didn't go to college until he got back. Uh, one thing is that when he graduated, I, I graduated, he kept back and go to, uh, finished his credit so he could graduate. So we graduated the same year. And I think that's when it really hit me, when I saw him come out on the stage. <clears throat> and uh, it, to say, see him come through graduating, you know, after he'd been through this in the Navy was just really very emotional for me. Yeah, we went dancing. The ward <clears throat> had dances almost every Saturday night, and we did do a lot of dancing. And, and we also danced a lot at all the high school dances, because they had a lot of dances there, too. So we did, and now another thing that reminds me, <laughs> friends of Dad, Ron Belknap, which is a good friend of Dad's right now, and his other friends, we used to go down to Midgley's basement and roll up the carpet and dance. So we did a lot of dancing together. All White City Ballroom is where we became engaged. Uh, Tommy Dorsey was the big band there, and that was where we became engaged. We used to have, have some fun, I mean, at the White City Ball. Even the high school had their big dances there. We got married in, uh, in the canyon. Mom and Dad had a big canyon home. So we had our wedding uh, by the river. And Mother and Dad, you know, it was really nice. And we had a lot of people there. Uh, he, Dad was late for the wedding, and I was afraid maybe he gave up. Wasn't going to do it, but I'd come to find out that Richard was going to be his best man. and. They had a parade and it stopped the traffic so Richard couldn't get home to get home. So uh, Dad was about an hour late getting there for the wedding. I was getting a little nervous. Okay, we had a snowstorm in March and it, was a, it really snowed a lot. <clears throat> and Dad was out there shoveling snow and he was, it was throwing it up over his head. But in May, we got real warm and all that snow melted and we had a flood. And we had a big park that belonged to mom and dad. <clears throat> and it was full of water. The, the neighbors had a canoe, they could put their, ride their canoe on it. And the daffodils were coming up at that time and they just kept coming up our heads above the water. So here's the daffodils with their heads up in the, above the water. But um, the water, there was a, Dad, <clears throat> there was a big garage just up above our place that belonged to Mother and Dad. <clears throat> and Dad was out there uh, in waders. They had to watch it all the time because of things coming down so that it wouldn't break the sandbag that they had. And I think Dad's had to pull pink out of there once because she fell in. But it was, it was really quite something to... When, uh, before we knew we got married, we knew we were going to go to California because Dad was going to go to school down there <clears throat> where he could get his degree faster. 
So we packed up and moved to California. We went down on a Greyhound bus, and when we got there, I thought, oh, is this, is this what everybody raves about? Because the bus station was in about the worst part of the California, or the state of Los, city of Los Angeles that it could be in. <clears throat> and we had a hard time trying to find a place to stay. We stayed in a hotel for, oh, what's a month or so, I guess, until we finally found something to live in. And the first apartment we had was you pulled the bed, a Murphy bed, you pulled it out of the wall and you could put your hands like this and reach from one wall to the next in the kitchen. And it was, and the refrigerator was on top of, or the stove, which was a four burner gas stove, was on top of the refrigerator. And it was a, it was an experience, but heck, that's what young Marys do. It was, when he went to school there. Um, we had some great friends down there. We made a lot of memories down there. <clears throat> and how long were you down there? Two years. Well, Dad, then I came home a little bit earlier because I had Debbie. I got pregnant, and we didn't. Uh, couldn't. I was. I was going to have her before we were ready to come home, so I came home early, so I could have the baby at home and not have to travel. Well, um, it was, uh, everything went okay until, baby, until Debbie was born. And it was, it was not fun having, not having Dad there with us, with me. But uh, we started having trouble with Debbie oh, just about a month after she was born. She couldn't ever keep anything down on her, in her stomach. And, and she had terrible bowel troubles. And we took her to one doctor, which was a friend of mom and dad's and he couldn't figure out what was wrong with her and we just kept going on like that until she was almost two years old or pretty close to that and then we went to Homer Rich and I just told him what was happening to her and he knew right off what it was. So it was not a leave time for Debbie. She had this terrible bowel problem. She had lung problems. She coughed and coughed and it just sounded like it was going to tear the inside out of her. Uh, we had her in the hospital several times. And of course, they didn't know a whole lot about cystic fibrosis at that time, uh, like they do now. So it was, and then she had to have surgery on her, a part, of, a section of her lung removed when she was five, and it was right shortly after that that she got polio. So on top of the cystic fibrosis and the polio, that's what took her. But she was put here on on this earth for a reason, and that was to get Dad right back to. Her mission was to get Dad and I back to going to church. Because when the elders came and when she died, they told us that somebody else was going to raise Debbie and probably be Grandma Toyne. And that really hit me. I didn't want that to happen. So that's what would become active. At those times, every time we took her to the hospital, they wouldn't let us go by or visit her. We had to stand out in the hallway to look at her. We couldn't go, you know, nowadays you can go in and touch him and and stay with them and everything. We couldn't do that. They, their rules were very, very strict. So it was, uh, it was, it was awful when they, when you couldn't get near. <clears throat> when she, when the, she, when she got polio, uh, we were living in the canyon, <clears throat> and she just wasn't feeling good. She wasn't doing anything. So we just. She just laid around on the couch when I tried to give her something to eat, some jello, it came back up through her nose. So we called Dr. Rich, and he came right up. That, that, it was a Sunday night, and he took her, we, then he took her to the hospital. And I'd taken the, uh, Diane and Rob down to Grandma Toyne's, and Aunt Virginia was going to cut my hair. And what, that was the weirdest thing. I was talking about it with, with my another friend here. That I just. I was sitting there cutting my hair, and I said, it just felt like, oh, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And so I hurried up and went up to, Dad was trying to find me, and I, don't, I can't remember what all. There was a lot of confusion going on, but I just knew in my heart something. That she, I knew that by the time she was dying, I knew that. I just had that feeling in my heart. I haven't even told that to Dad. <laughs> went to the hospital, she, you know, she was put in an iron lung, and it was at the, what they called the St. Ben's, and it was a Catholic church, and the nuns were very sweet, but we couldn't, we never did see her until after they'd taken her out of the 
after she had gone. Well, she wanted to go to church. She wanted that, you know, she just, I don't know where this even come from because we didn't go, but she wanted to go to church and dad take her up to Huntsville a couple of times to go. I had two other kids, so I didn't go, but dad, dad did take her a couple of times to Sunday school and, you know, met the bishop right there. And I just think that she was put on this earth and as her mission to get us to go back to church because I don't know. I just think that I, Dad and I both feel that this was her mission on earth was to get us active in the church again. We started going, but uh, got married in the Salt Lake Temple in 1959, and we've been active going ever since. Well, kind of. I kind of slipped off when I went to when I was working because. The saddest thing is I felt like having a clean house and the laundry done was more important than anything else. So I didn't go there for a while, but anyway, we, we're active going to the temple now, going to church and hopefully doing the right thing. When Dee went on a mission, my dad, he was a smoker and a drinker. He just quit everything and he says, I can't support a son on a mission and have these bad habits. So he quit. But when he quit, mom quit too. But it made such a difference in their lives. <clears throat> Dad was called into the bishopric. Uh, and he, in fact, he even went to church with a cigarette package in his pocket. He says he wasn't gonna be hypocritical. Uh, and, and mom too, she changed it, but they were Mother became very active in the primary and she loved her primary kids. She just went oh, all out. She would visit them and she just loved her primary. Dad was, in, like I said, in the bishopric until he got sick and couldn't do it anymore, but they just made a complete turnaround in their lives when Dee went on his mission. Well, we wanted, we moved to Huntsville because we had, uh, you know, our family and we wanted them to learn how to work. So we looked around and, and uh, we looked all over and finally decided to move to Huntsville. And uh, I think it was one of the greatest things we did. Dad built our home, most of it by himself. He'd come home from work and change his clothes and go back up there and work till midnight and have to get back up and go to work in the morning. And it was, it was hard. It took him, what, three years to finally build it. But I think it was one, a good move because the kids learn how to work and they're all good workers now. So it was worth it. We spent 40 years up in Huntsville, had some friends that are, are lifelong friends, what's left of them now. We made some great friends up there, great people. We had the, after I retired from the Eagles and I had a pension, we built the, started the greenhouse nursery business. And I thought, I think we were successful at that. <clears throat> we had a pretty good sized nursery and it was, got um, almost too much for dad and I when we got older, because we were older when we started. But we still had to, we worked hard and it was hard. We got a little bit more than we could handle. We, uh, we, I think we both regret selling it when we did because we loved it and we loved the people and we loved the business and we often say we wish we had it, but it was a good successful business for us. Part of Our kids worked hard up there. They had to milk the cows early in the morning and oh, it was really cold up there. <clears throat> It was, you know, it was not fun for them because they had to get up really early and milk the cow before they could go to work or go to school. And they had to catch a bus out in front of the house uh, about 7.30 in the morning. So they really had to get up early to get their chores done before they could go to school. We did go night crawler, hunting night crawlers, which we could find a lot of them in our yard. We had a big yard and it was full of worms. And we'd sell night crawlers to the fishermen that would go by. And we did, I mean, you kids did pretty good. Oh, that was sad. We moved out of Huntsville because we had to sell our house. Was, we wanted to sell the business and we couldn't sell the business without selling the house. 
So we, we didn't want to live in Ogden, so we drove around until we found something, and we was driving up around Perry, and at the time when we moved up, there was more orchards than there was now. Now there's more horse houses than there is orchards, but that was our move down here. We found a real nice home down there in Perry, which I still love very much. We lived there for 17 years <clears throat> and decided to build a new home when we were in our late 80s, which was a lot of people think we were nuts. And if it hadn't been for the help of our kids to help us move, but what we did. So when we got our call to go to Nauvoo, we had all the kids there. And just, it was a big surprise and whoa, we got to go to Nauvoo. And that was, that was one of the nicest, that was the best thing for us really, to go on that mission. It was hard work, but it was a lot of fun. We met some wonderful people that we still keep in contact with to, to this day. <clears throat> then a couple of years later, we decided to go on another mission and we went to Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania, where we worked in the office, did a lot of traveling there <clears throat> because we had to take care of the apartments for the missionaries. And we had to move them a lot, clean the house apartments when they got through. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of work, but we enjoyed it. We enjoyed very much working with the missionaries. For Christmas morning, and I, Dad and I have been doing this since we got married. We have a tradition on Christmas morning of having the family together. We have scones, which we call robs. And I'll tell you about how we call get into that. Robs, or scones, robs, scrambled eggs with cream cheese, bacon, and sausages. <clears throat> but the reason we call them robs is because when my grandmother, or great grandmother, used to make them quite often, and it seemed like every time that they were making Robs, this young man came over and his name was Rob, so they started calling him Robs. And we just, my family still calls them Robs. Even my brothers and sisters, uh, the twins call them Robs, and so, so does Drew. I wish I knew more about my grandma Knight. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know my dad's mother at all because she died before I was born, so I didn't know any of his parents. But my grandma Knight was my mom's mother. And dad was in the legislature, so dad, mom would go, and dad would go to Salt Lake when I was in there. She'd stay in the hotel, and I stayed with my grandma. So I know, you know, she spent a lot, I, I love my grandma Knight. She was, she was fun to stay with and did a lot of fun things. But I wish now I knew more about my grandma. I, I know that my mother was not happy when she was growing up with her because they moved around so lot and, and I don't, I just would like to know what was, what my grandma was like when she was growing up. Well, I do have a strong testimony. I know that Jesus lives. I know that we have a living Father in heaven. I know that our prayers are answered because I've had many prayers answered. I love the Gospel. I love the Book of Mormon. I love the opportunity to attend the temple to do the work that we've been doing. I know that I'll be able to see Debbie again if I do what's right and endure to the end and I'm trying, striving to live that. Um, I love this new program of Come Follow Me because it has helped me really learn the gospel and study harder. And Dad and I have been, every morning we spend a half hour to an hour or more studying the gospel. And he's, uh, it just built my testimony and faith in the gospel.